In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Zortrax Inventure 3D printer. Let's go. Okay, so I've now had this printer for a few months and I've been putting it through its paces using a few different materials and plenty of hours of printing. I've now done around about 300 hours of printing with this machine, so I feel I'm quite well versed in using it and uh, hopefully can present a good review for you today. Firstly, let's start with a quick spec check of this machine. You might have already seen this if you watched my unboxing video, but if you haven't, this is a 3D printer from Zortrax, a Polish 3D printer and manufacturer. It is a prosumer level printer. In other words, it's got a lot of funky bells and whistles and will do a lot more than the standard desktop machine. This one, as you can see, is pretty small and it bears with it a build volume of 135 by 135 by 130 millimeters. It is dual extrusion uh, with the technology that Zortrax call LPD plus, layer plastic deposition, plus being that it has the dual extrusion and so can use soluble supports. That is a point worth clarifying. Although this printer is dual extrusion, the secondary extruder is primarily for support material. You can also use PLA, um, but it is just for support material. It's not dual extrusion in terms of doing fancy two color prints. It is dedicated for support structure. There is a reason for that. The secondary extruder is slightly different in the actual hardware and is designed slightly differently so that it works better with these sometimes difficult to print soluble materials. As you can see, the printer is fully enclosed, accessed via a door at the front, and then room for the materials in these accesses to the side. The printer has a built-in HEPA filter and is capable of high temp materials. I believe the extruders go up to 380 degrees centigrade and the heated chamber itself will go up to 80 degrees centigrade. So all in all, quite a bit of kit. Okay, so now let's start with the actual review of this printer. As I said, I've been printing with it for around about 300 hours of print time and I've had it for a few months, so I'm quite well versed in it. And I feel like I know its strengths and weaknesses. If you've seen some of my other reviews, you know I don't normally pull any punches. So if this printer has problems, you'd know. At the moment, it's 716 Great British Pounds on the Zortrax website as part of their Black Friday deal. And that just blows me away. It, it's, it's reminiscent of some very, very high level commercial printers that I've used and they are considerably higher cost. So it's a really mighty little powerhouse but with so much functionality packed into a small box. And I really love it. I would, yeah, I love it. But anyway, <laughs> the pros. <laughs> The dual extrusion, as I've mentioned, the, I call it LPD plus, single extrusion plus support. It works really well. I don't know if you can see behind me, but there's about 17 or 18 benches. And what those 18 benches are, were calibration prints that I had to do on a different dual extruder printer. It took me 18 benches to get the calibration perfect. And that was quite a lot of time. On this printer, there was a very small calibration test that I showed in the follow-up video on, the Zor on this printer. And, and then that was it. The, the, the dual extrusion doesn't really need any calibration and it just, it just works. So if you've never printed before or you've never used dual extrusion before, it doesn't really matter, it just works. So that's fantastic. The bed. Again, something else which works fantastically well. These divots in the bed do limit the, the smooth print you could get if you were printing directly onto the bed rather than using a raft, but there's good reason for that. They enable this printer to, to stay leveled. You, you do the small setup at the start and then it just works. Again, I've printed 300 odd hours with this printer. I haven't leveled the bed again once and that is crazy. On most 3D printers, even ones that stay leveled really well, I'm always doing little micro adjustments, especially when performing large prints, and this just doesn't need anything. It just 
it does its thing and uh, you come back later to a finished print. While I'm on the build plates, I also wanted to say that in my opinion and from my experience, it is hard wearing. I read somewhere that you have to change them every 20 hours and it's considered a consumable. Um, that wasn't on Azure Tracks website, but uh, I've not found that at all. As I said, 300 hours, all the same build plates, not even had to take it out. It's worked really well and the prints pop off cleanly when they finished. They stay adhered well to the bed when it's printing and pop off cleanly when it's finished. So I've not had any uh, noticeable signs of degradation on the build plate at all. Um, so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if it managed another 300 hours. I've only had one failure on this printer the whole time I've been using it and that was completely my fault, messing around with um, different size spools. Um, so yeah, so realistically a fault of this printer, no failed prints the whole time I've had it. Although the HEPA filter doesn't work as well if you've got these spool doors open, it does still have one, which is a lot more than a lot of printers do. Uh, and so it makes me feel more comfortable printing with some of these higher temperature materials and those materials that can give off nasty fumes. So that's a big win. This is a really small, stupid pro but worth a mention because I absolutely love it. The scraper that comes with this printer, I've, I use it on all my printers. It is, I don't know, really good. Because of most of the things I've already said, this is a printer that really does require little to no experience. It's dedicated slicer, which has profiles tuned for all of the materials that Zortrax offer. So if you have never printed before, you can, you can just drop a model in, use the predefined settings, and put it on. Yeah, it's not not much more involved in that other than changing the materials. But um, yeah, that that is a big a big win in my opinion because there aren't many printers in today's day and age for this price that just work. There really aren't. So it's it's great. It's great in that respect. The other thing I wanted to mention is the build quality of this printer. I mean, just trying to pick it up, it's it's a hefty hefty thing and that build quality, that weight, adds to the dimensional stability and the quality of the parts that you get from the printer. The final thing I wanted to say is that although this printer is proprietary and normally I wouldn't be too fond of that, I completely understand why a company would choose to do that and in credit to Zortrax, they have also ensured that this printer is compatible with any other material so you can use Z Suite with your own settings, your own tweak settings, and make this printer work with any material on the market. So despite being proprietary in a lot of senses, it is highly compatible from a material sense, which is obviously really good. While I'm on materials, this is the materials list that Zortrax offer. They have ZESD, which is a electrostatic discharge material. You've got the ZPLA and the ZPLA Pro, the ZASA Pro, ZHIP, ZGlass, ZPTG, ZUltra, ZPC, ABS, ZABS, and I believe there's more as well. But it is quite an extensive list that you can have out of the box perfect printing with, which is quite nice. So without further ado, let's go on to the cons. The first thing I noticed with this printer that could stand to be improved slightly is the layout of the Bowden tubes. Because you're dealing with quite a small printer space, at times when the head is moving around, the Bowden tubes can be at quite a tight angle. That means when you're loading material in through the Bowden tubes initially, you do have to push quite hard. Okay, it's not the end of the world, but it was something I noticed, so something I wanted to point out. The second thing I noticed about this printer is it is designed for small spools. You see here, the side of the printer, the space for the spools is quite small, and so you're limited on the weight of material you can get in this printer closed off. No problem if you're printing with the little 350 gram Zortrax spools. They go in there like a glove and they work brilliantly. But obviously if you're doing a lot of printing with the same material, you might not want to be changing spools all the time. And then you're more likely to be using the external holder that Zortrax provide for the inventor, which goes on like so, and then allows you to hold 
a bigger spool on the outside of the printer. And what I found when using the external spool holders is the HEPA filter doesn't work as efficiently because obviously you've got more openings on the printer and so things like ABS smells from printing are more noticeable. Again, not massive problems, but worth noting. Another con I've noticed for this printer is the bed itself. As you can see, the bed has a number of notches, nine in fact of this style, and five of the metal pieces. And when printing across this in a big flat section, you will notice those deviations on that surface of the print. Most of the time when you're doing prints with this machine, you will be using a soluble support raft. But if you don't want to, and you want to just stick to that one extruder, then you will notice these deviations when you are looking at the bottom of your model. That said, if the part is small enough to fit in one of the sections where there are no notches, then you won't notice anything. But given that it's already quite a small printer, the likelihood of that is quite low. The final con from a hardware perspective is the draft exclusion at the top of this printer. It is glued on at the front, and so a couple of times it has sprung away. So I think that part of the machine would have benefited from a little bit of reinforcement. As I said, this is a fully enclosed printer. So unless you're printing with the lid open like this, which I have no idea why you would be, it's not really going to make much difference. But again, it's worth mentioning. The final con I have on the list is obviously in relation to the fact that this is a proprietary printer. There are countless reasons why a company would choose to be proprietary so I won't go into those but the negative that that has is it does restrict you to the use of Z Suite which is the slicing software it is very good but there are always limitations to one software compared to another and it would have been nice to have a little bit more flexibility in terms of the slices that you could use with this printer now Zortrax chose to limit this printer to Z Suite only because it does have multiple temperature controllers, for example, the heated chamber. And basically they wanted to make sure that prints with this printer actually work. And so the profiles that they've created for the materials they offer are really good. And so it just works. That's the cons list out the way. So I don't know if you can guess, but I would recommend this printer. It is a very very strong entry into the 3d printing space if you have never printed before and you're looking to get into printing and you don't want to spend too much time tinkering this really is the printer for you I could see this being a fantastic workhorse in a office environment something where you've got lots of different users all who don't really have uh, necessarily the time or the interest to dedicate and learn 3d printing too much they could pick up Z Suite, use this printer really easily, and reliability is good. So if you're considering this from a point of view of um, print on demand, that sort of thing would be excellent. Uh, I mean, I, I started printing many years ago and at the time, reliability was poor. And in a lot of respects on cheap printers, reliability is still pretty bad with 3D printing. So to have a printer at this price point, that is, from my experience, really, really high reliability, then you know, that goes a long way. I would recommend it. If you have any questions at all about this printer, then by all means, put them in the comments down below and I will answer completely honestly and completely with my experience of this printer. I'd love, I'd love to hear from you. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. I'm now going to show you a recent print that I did for this review. So another thing to note as well actually, the door close is really nice. Um, as you can see on here, print using dual support. This is PLA and uh, water soluble support. The printer uses a cleaning block and for dual support materials as they go this is this would be considered quite an efficient printing block um, it actually wipes the printer nozzles at the back as well as well as producing this uh, purge block so generally speaking from a environmental perspective 
of waste management. This is this is quite good from this printer. You couldn't knock it too much. I hate waste myself, but it's not too bad. This printer is designed to be used with the DSS wash station, which is a dedicated support dissolving unit. You put the water in, it has got a heated chamber. And you can drain the uh, production out the back. And it will look something like this, which is water plus, plus the dissolved support material. I did a little bit of research and as long as you are dissolving it properly and you have it in the proper ratio of one to 20 as a minimum, in other words, 25 grams of support material would need half a liter of water then you can pour that down uh, your drain if you're connected to mains if you're connected to a, uh, a septic tank or your, your own water supply then i would suggest bottling it like this and emptying it into a mains somewhere else if you are connected to mains, then there is a safe limit of two kilograms of BVOH per day. So two kilograms of soluble support material. You'd have a job to make that much with just one of these printers. But if you had a farm and you're printing for business, then that's something to bear in mind. On that note, obviously when you have your model finished like this, one way you can improve that ratio a bit is break off some of the supports first. That means you'll then require less water to dissolve the material and it will also happen faster because the concentration is lower and yeah, there it is. So let's speed through this one and you can see how this looks finished at the end. While I'm cleaning this up, I may as well mention that this material used, that this print used about 110 grams of uh, PLA and 110 grams of um, the support material. So where PLA is concerned, the using support material would increase the cost of the print. But if you're using an expensive primary material, and there are a lot of them around as you progress into the more industrial materials, then actually using soluble support material could save you a few bucks. Also in Z Suite, you do have the option of using the interface layer. So rather than printing this whole block as the dissolvable support material, you could use PLA for 90% of it and then just that top little 10%, that top interface layer, you can use with the soluble material, which is generally speaking, another good idea for all the reasons I've discussed below. I only didn't use it for this one because I wanted to show you the the capability of this printer and the fact that it can reliably print this much support material. The model can then be placed into the DESS wash station with some water, the temperature set and the machine turned on, which rotates the water to speed up the process and it will come out looking something like this. Anyway, that's it for today's review. If you did enjoy, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe. See you next time. Cheers.